Yeah, he came in early this morning. He's been here all day with us. He's a good friend of mine. And I want, I'm going to introduce the band now. Risa is another, Risa Cohen is another dear friend of mine. And her family have been playing for band books for many years. Her husband and the boys, sometimes all of them, sometimes some of them. We are so blessed. But Risa is our songbird. And she's brought with her her friend Chris. And Chris is going to help her, and they're going to sing us some rainbow songs. So just relax and enjoy this concert. All right. And do we have to be done at five exactly? Not, no. No, we can go a little over because I might take 30 minutes. So. You can take 30 All right. minutes. Um, we'll find you. <laughs> you all can move up if you want to. I feel like some of you might not see me because of this post in the way. Feel free to come go front row or whatever you want. But um, thank you for the time of the whole day. Aw, thank you. Yeah, I'm right like today. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Just amazing. Oh, so thank come you. Come on, It's what time we're comfortable. We bonded. So while y'all are moving up, and please do, thank you for the introduction, Paulette. Um, as she mentioned, I enjoy coming every year. Usually I come with my husband, Ed, who, um, Wishes he could be with us, but he has a work function and um, really wishes he could be with us. But we're so delighted that Christopher Antelet can join us. He is um, the director of Chris's Music Factory. He's an incredible musician. And by the way, he also does um, all kinds of piano and um, guitar and all, every instrument lessons and piano and music. So anyway, um, uh, right. <laughs> all right, little plug for Chris. So I'm Risa. Do we have the slides ready? Version? Yeah. Thanks. Okay. All right, awesome. So um, we're here to sing band Rainbow Songs. This is our first time doing a game together. We were trying to figure out the name of our band. We decided we should be the band band. Yep. Not maybe just today, but anyway. <laughs> Oh, we can't see the, oh, how weird. Okay, well, whatever. Um, band, I'm going to talk about stuff anyway, so I'll, I'll tell you whatever's out there. Um, we are going to do three band songs. And uh, I'm going to borrow a little bit of what Dr. Barnes said before me about um, not every one of these songs is truly banned in the, in fact, None of these songs would be considered banned. Some of them, all of them, are related to works of art that have been banned or challenged in some way. But when we were thinking of a title to say three songs that are related to works of art that have been banned or challenged in some way, that wasn't a great title. So we did three banned songs. The last song truly was banned, right? Rainbow Band. That's a banned song. Um, the other two, Somewhere Over the Rainbow, and we'll do two versions of it. Uh, and the Rainbow Connection have not been banned, but they're related to works that have been banned. So on that note, Arjun, how do I, oh, you can do it from there? I can, uh, so okay. if, if you want it to be here or around here, you need to be in the clicking. Do you want to? All right, so I, should I go back and forth? Yeah. Okay, what's the button I hit? Okay, you can just back arrow over there. Okay, thank you very much. So. All right, so we're going to go forward to the Wizard of Oz. To the right. Keep going. There we go. The Wizard of Oz. Um, you've probably all seen the movie. Maybe some of you have read the book. Um, it's been banned many, many times. It was banned in Chicago Public Libraries in 1928 for being ungodly and for depicting women in strong leadership roles. Um, and uh, it was also um, in 19, uh, in 1952 was banned by Dorothy Dodd, who was a Florida librarian, and she said they were poorly written, untrue, unwholesome for the children in your community. Um, uh, she it was banned. I should say that Dorothy Dodd's challenge was not only for the Wizard of Oz, but she had a whole slew of books she wanted taken from the library. 
uh, including um, um, Tom Swift, Charfan, Bobsy Twins, Hardy Boys, um, and Nancy Tree. Uh, she wrote in Life magazine about this at the time. Uh, and in 1957, Ralph Oberling, uh, he was the director of the Choice Libraries, and he banned the book for having no value and for having negativism. negativism. And I want to say, uh, going back to what Dr. Barnes said about some challenges are for, it's for lots of different reasons, right? In his mind, this was silly pop culture. Kids should be reading real books. So this is not a real book. It would be like banning Captain Underpants now. Right. Um, so in 1944, he prevented. Um, uh, he's 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 tricky because he's a champion of justice in some ways. Like in 1944, he prevented the police from removing strange fruit from the library. But then he went and banned books and lots. So go figure. Um, this was nationwide news, and even our own Toledo Blade wrote about it, and that's the article. Um, that's the, the article from 1957 from the Toledo Blade. I do want to mention this ban of old and Detroit libraries lasted until 1972, which is pretty recent history. So it was um, widely criticized, of course, um, by many people, including his own son. Um, and Dr. Nye at MSU said, uh, if, the method, if the message of the Oz books, that of love, kindness, and non-selfishness, make the world a better place, if that message has no value today, then maybe the time is right to reassess a good many of other things besides the Detroit Library's approval list of children's books. Um, and um, this fight rebuttal not only for Nye, but also, like I said, his son, uh, Oldling's son, uh, Frank Baum, uh, also um, <laughs> Frank Baum wrote the book. Uh, many others, but Bam remained until 1972. Um, and more recently, in the 80s, um, in Tennessee, and this is very recent history, um, a group of fundamentalist Christian families pushed for the novel's removal from their public school. Uh, they wanted the novel taken away out of the school shelves. Um, and it was called the it, it was called the Mozart versus Hawkins County Public Schools. People often refer to it as Stokes too because it was so groundless and baseless. Um, and uh, it was thrown out by the Supreme Court when they upped the, the stakes and took it to the Supreme Court. So that's a case of justice learning. Um, right, I'm not going to read everything and give you death by PowerPoint, but there's um, a lot of surprise in facts here. I know you know how to read. They objected to a lot of books, including The Diary of Anne Frank, which I saw Paulette just give away. Um, there's a passage in the Diary of Anne Frank where um, uh, one of the characters is, is talking about how accepting all religions, and that's what they objected to. Um, so the attorney who represented uh, the the Christian group, um, they decide. They said, you know what? If you're not cool with what they're teaching in the school, go ahead and take your kids out of school. And this, in part, there's a lot of other things related to, but in part, this has led to a very big movement of a lot of religious families taking their kids out of school because they don't want their children to read reading in school. Um, okay. Um, I know you guys want to hear music. I, I apologize, you guys. I'm not really into the research this year, but this I found it really fascinating. Um, so I'll 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 skip through. I have more to say about this, but I know you guys want. So the judge required that the schools allow the allow the children to opt out of the reading courses, and this has been followed by many many cases where. Um, 
a lot of families are opting out because they don't agree with what's being taught. Mm -hmm. It's a growing movement. Uh, but you know, here's the justice. They took it to the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court turned it down. Yay! All right, let's sing. <laughs> So um, we're going to sing this song twice. The first version will be um, inspired by Judy. I'm not Judy or Israel, but I like them both. I will say I only chose songs that I had a deep, deep love for. And if you like the songs, you would do well to go find the original recordings because they're all much better than mine. But, but Chris is better than all of them, so here we go. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> All right, we're, we're going to do a version now, but um, inspired by um, Israel Kamakabi Bole. Um, he was a great Hawaiian musician, um, played the youth, so I'm going to switch to you here. All right, awesome. We didn't rehearse wings. I did not rehearse with sleeves. Sleeves are problematic. I love the bracelets, by the way, but I'm going to wait till I'm done with instruments. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. We'll try again.
All right, so no, all right, no slides. Well, I'll just move it. Yeah, I don't see oh, that. Uh, Argent, how do we get the slides? Slide. Yeah. All, right. Um, all right, so the next song is The Rainbow Connection, which is from the Muppet movie. Um, the Muppet movie was created by uh, Jim Henson, um, who uh, that was at the age of 53 and in 1990, unfortunately, but he was an incredible, incredible artist. Um, I was going to show the video, but I don't know if I am. Do you guys want to see the video? Thumbs up or thumbs down? Just show me thumbs up if you want to see the video. It's not me. It's a video, a clip from the Muppet movie. Do you want to see it? Yeah. You want to see it? All right. So listen, this movie came out in 1979, which was not that long ago, but a very different time. And I'm going to show you this quick clip. It's only like four minutes. Uh, it's less now. It's like four minutes. Um, and um, I'm going to ask you why you think this movie was censored. All right. Hello, Santa. Bye, Miss Lee. Why is it That's a small talk and bye, Miss Lee. I don't even know you. Hey, oh, my girl. 
So we just saw like two minutes of video and in it, we saw like a lot of things that happened that might have gotten a children's movie censored. Anyone have any ideas? What do you think? I will bet a hundred dollars. It's because of the reference to Hinduism. To, to the Harry Krishna group? That is a great guess. Any other guesses? No one wants to mess with you, so we're going to bet a hundred dollars. I'm going to tell you that's not happening. No, <laughs> any other guesses? Yeah. Such a good guess, right? Because like Kermit's that with that girl who's like Madeline Khan and she's playing this bluesy affair. Um uh not not why it was censored. Any other guesses? I should give away a prize. Uh, I don't really have any prizes, but any other guesses? Break it down. Yeah. The gun. Not like it's censored. Any other guesses? Yes. Bear dancing on stage. No. I know. It's crazy, right? Yeah. Fat sailor, like a fat joke. Fat joke. Not like it's censored. You got it. Breaking into the beer bottle. What? Yes. Breaking into the beer bottle. Broken beer bottle. Not okay. Okay. So it's 1979. Guns are fine. Okay. Bluesies are fine. Um, fat jokes, Harry Krishna jokes, right? Actually, all of this is questionable, right? But the thing that happened was in um, New Zealand, uh, it got censored for the broken beer bottle. So there you go. Um, and with that, maybe we can go to our, oh, I don't know, we don't. I'm getting out of slides. We're gonna sing "Ready for Fish," which is like my favorite song in the movie. It's one of my favorite songs of all time, actually. I'm really good. I like it. Hope you like it. So, all right. I I gotta get a uke strap for my uke. That I have another uke with a strap, but I I can't use it anyway. Very good. and Shines, but only shines. 
Anybody in here a broadcast broadcasting student? Have anybody here who is a broadcasting student? No. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you. We could use some help taking stuff. Oh, down. I still have this. And and we would like to get some. Oh, are you six more? We have one more. I that. I'm sorry. That's okay. Same time. Yes. My fifth hour today. Just yeah, so keep going. Time. Problem at all. Yeah, I'm let's keep going the whole time, okay? Is that cool? All right, so let's do the two subjects. That's my math is bad. No problem. Well, we get another yeah, sum, which is really bad. I'm like months ago. I missed all my slides. Oh, I forgot something. I'll see you on the first day. I'll do it. Thanks. Yeah. All right. Um, all right. Uh, I went in chronological order. Um, first, Wizard of Oz, then Muppet Movie, and now we're on to Rainbow Land. This this is very recent history, going back to it's still happening. This is current events. Okay. Um, yeah. So, um, Rainbow Land is a song by uh, Miley Cyrus and Dolly Parton. Um, raise your hand if you love Dolly, if you're a Dolly fan. Awesome. All right, hands down. You know, raise your hand if you hate Dolly. Nobody hates Dolly. Nobody in the whole world hates Dolly. She's amazing. She wrote Jolene and I Will Always Love You in the same day. Um, in fact, she's like the only thing that, yeah, one more. The only thing we can like all agree on. And she's been called a secular American saint. Because she's so incredible. And this is why I love Dolly the most. It's yeah. part of the Imagination Library. Go, Dolly, go. Um, her father, Robert, never learned to read. 
And so that is why Valerie started the North Imagination Library, and she's known as the Book Lady. And she started it just in her state of, uh, just in her county, actually, of Tennessee, where illiteracy was a huge problem, and started giving away a book a month to every child under five percent, under five, under five, um, at birth through five years old, regardless of income. And then she expanded it to the state, and now it's uh, nationwide. And um, uh, she's she gives away over a million books a month. So, um, yeah, she's pretty special. All right, let's, uh, let's go to Rainbow Land and Rainbow Land Band and why, why I'm talking about this. So, um, yeah, that's cool. Thanks. All right, so Melissa Temple um, was a, a first grade teacher um, in uh, Wisconsin, in Wapanoff, Wisconsin, and she wanted to do a concert that would include It's a Small World, Here Comes the Sun, Dave Dolores, and Rainbow Land. That was her um, concert program, and um, she was told the full Rainbow Land. She felt it was, they felt, the school district felt it was too controversial. Uh, I can't wait for it. I wish you could read the lyrics from where you are. That's the lyrics. So this was her post about being, uh, being taken from the concert. She was really upset about it, so she posted, and then, uh, um, so, so Wakisha or Wakisha, I forget how Wakisha put out a statement um, saying that uh, a different teacher had suggested the song with the music teacher, and the music teacher checked with the principal, and they deemed it too controversial in, in light of the district's classroom policy. Anyway, they banned it from the concert. So here's a fun fact. Oh, I forgot to tell the other one because I lost my slides for a bit. Um, there was a fun fact, fun connection back when I did the research. I found out connection between Muppet movie and Wizard of Oz, which was the, the Muppets made a, the Muppets Wizard of Oz. I have a slide with a picture. Anyway, this one, this fun fact, fun connection is that Instead of Rainbow Land, they suggested she do Rainbow Connection. So, yeah, let's see where we go. This is Melissa Temple. She's the first grade teacher, and um, just this past July, she was fired. Um, so we're going to sing Rainbow Land for Melissa. Uh, yeah, you can stop there. I guess. Everything goes as planned and smile. Cause I know if we try, we could really make a difference in this world. Won't give up for people, we it's the only thing I think I'm there I stay. Start 
Research. <laughs> huge thanks, huge, huge thanks, um, huge thanks to uh, Paulette and Arjun and everyone on the committee. This is such an important, important event. Thank you to all of you guys for showing up. I know it was a long day. Thank you so much. <laughs>